Long, long ago in a YouTube verse far, far away, I uploaded what was one of my first videos I ever posted to YouTube. It was me demonstrating how to use the Waves API EQ. In fact, it's been over 10 years since that video came out and it has over 37,000 views. So clearly you guys are watching that video. However, watching it again is a bit cringe and I think things could have been explained a little bit better. So today we're going to be revisiting both flavors of this EQ and we're gonna use additional tools to go ahead and demonstrate how to properly use this EQ. But before we do that, like what we always do, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Okay, so we have our Pro Tools session loaded up, and as you can see on the left-hand side, we have our 550A, in the middle we have the 550B, and then on the right-hand side, we have a plugin you may or may not be familiar with. This is Waves Q-Clone. Now, we're going to be using this today, so that way it works as a visual representation of the changes that we're making with each one of these EQ. It'll help us to better understand the behavior of each one of these different plugins, so allow me to quickly demonstrate. Let's say we want to go ahead and manipulate 7K and we want to raise it by, let's say, 6 dB. You can actually see that change on the right-hand side happening in real time. So again, we're just going to be using Qclone as a visual aid to have a better understanding of the behavior of each one of these EQs. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of how this environment is set up, let's go ahead and start looking at the parameters of the API 550A first. With the 550A loaded up in front of us, the first thing you'll notice is that we have three different bands to work with. We have a high, a middle, and a low. Now, inside of each band, you'll also notice that there's two different knobs. The blue knobs indicate the frequency that you're going to be working with, and the gray knob is for the gain, whether you want to go ahead and reduce it or increase it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the high band first. To start manipulating the parameters of our high band, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and select the frequency we wanna go ahead and affect. There's actually two ways to go ahead and do this. We can either go ahead and select whatever number frequency that we wanna select. So for this example, let's say 10K, simply click on that and it's selected. Or if you go ahead and click on the blue knob itself in the center, you'll see there's this yellow ring. That's how you know you're affecting this specific parameter. You can then go ahead and turn it uh, left or right using your mouse to be able to select it as well. So let's go ahead and for this example, choose 7K. All right, now that we have our frequency selected, let's go ahead and try to do the same thing now by using our gain knob. So with this, again, we can either click a number on any side of the knob to be able to start affecting it, or we can start to click more towards the center just outside of the blue knob to go ahead and start to make our changes. So let's go ahead and do negative six first by just clicking the number and we can see that happening in real time in Qclone. And now let's go ahead and try to change it again, but now we're gonna try to turn it. And as you can see, we are able to do the same thing using just our mouse. All right, another thing you'll also notice about the high band is by default, it's set to a shelf. If you want to change this, that's where you're going to look down towards the bottom of the plugin and you'll see this toggle uh, switch labeled HF. Right now you can see it's on a shelf, but if you go ahead and click this, it will toggle over and switch it to a standard queue. So keep that in mind in case you wanna be able to have it with this type of behavior. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the middle band. To start making changes in the middle band, it actually works much the same as we just saw with the high band. There are a couple things to note, but let me go ahead and demonstrate first. Let's go ahead and select our frequency. I'll just, for this example, do, let's do 3K, and I'll go ahead and increase it by 6 dB. Again, we can see that happening in real time on the right-hand side. Now, one thing I do wanna note where this is a little bit different than the other bands is first of all, it's using a standard queue. As you can see, there's no parameters at the bottom to be able to change the type of queue that we're using. It's just a standard queue. We can't change it to a shelf. Another thing to keep in mind, and this is more so a comment about the differences between all of the different bands, is that inside of each band, you're given only a specific range of frequencies that you're allowed to work with. Allow me to explain. On the low band, you can actually see we're only able to affect from 50 hertz to 400, the middle from 400 to 5K, and then on the high band from 5K to 15. So please just keep in mind that whenever you're using one particular band, you only have a certain set of frequencies that you're allowed to work with. All right, now that we looked at the middle band, let's go ahead and look at the last band, which will be our low shelf. Like the high and middle band, the first thing we need to do is select the frequency we wanna go ahead and work with. For the low band, I'll go ahead and select 300 hertz. All right, let's go ahead and now change the gain, which I'll go ahead and set to 9 dB. 
As you'll notice, it works much the same way as the high band shelf. By default, it's set to a shelf. However, if you look at the toggle switch, it actually shows that it's supposed to be a standard queue. I don't know if this is a bug with Waves or this was an issue on the actual piece of hardware and for authenticity purposes, they decided to go ahead and keep it this way. But please just note that in order to actually set this to a standard queue, you're going to go ahead and need to click the toggle switch. So clearly this is inverted. Again, I don't know if this is a bug that Waves needs to address, but please just keep this in mind while you're mixing. Okay, now with the low band address, let's go ahead and look at the final parameter before we move over to the 550B. For the last parameter to look at here for the 550A is going to be this filter switch. As you can see here inside of Qclone, the EQ curve is completely flat. However, if we go ahead and enable this, you can see we now have a roll off on the low end and as well as the high end. The reason why this existed, this was a workaround to be able to give you the ability to still use your high and low bands to manipulate other frequencies while still giving you the ability to, again, still do the roll off and not to use those higher or lower bands for this specific purpose. So kind of a clever solution for when this first came out. Okay, now that we addressed all the main parameters for the 550A, let's go ahead and now take a look at the 550B. As you can see, the 550B not only looks, but operates very similar to the 550A. We still have our blue and green knobs to be able to select our frequency and manipulate it. Now, there are some differences though. The most obvious one that you can probably tell right off the bat is the fact that we have four bands now to work with. One high, two middles, and then a low. Another thing you might also notice is that at the very bottom of the plugin, we have the absence of those toggle switches, those buttons that we had. Some of them have either been completely removed from the plugin or they're just moved to a different area on the plugin itself. Allow me to go ahead and demonstrate. Let's say we want to go ahead and take 7K and increase it by 6 dB. By default, like we saw in the 550A, it is a shelf. But if you now want to switch this to a standard queue, you now have this little toggle switch here in between the high shelf and one of the middle bands. When you go ahead and select this, you now have your standard queue. Another thing I also want to note is if we want to do the same thing with the low band shelf, we'll go ahead and increase 300 by 6 dB. It actually works as it's appropriately labeled. You can see here that this is a shelf. And if we want to go ahead and change this to the standard queue, we can go ahead and switch it and it works appropriately. So again, I don't know if this was a bug, but it's glad to see on the 550B that it is working as anticipated. All right, so those are really the biggest differences between the 550A and the 550B. All I want to do now is just go over some very miscellaneous parameters that we see here on the right hand side of the plugin, and we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Quick note about the miscellaneous parameters, they will be exactly the same for both the 550A and the 550B. Since they are the same, all we're going to use is the 550B to go ahead and demonstrate what these different parameters do. Let's first go ahead and look at the EQ in. So the EQN is here at the bottom of the plugin and all it will do is disable the EQ section of the plugin, but still allow you to be able to use the other miscellaneous parameters that the 550A and 550B have to offer. All right, next we have our polarity switch where we'll simply just flip the polarity of our signal. Below this, we do have our output knob so that way we can go ahead and adjust the gain structure of our overall signal after manipulating it with the different bands. Lastly, what we have here is a very interesting one, which is going to be our analog on and off. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this parameter. When enabled, the analog switch will actually introduce a little bit of noise into your signal chain. Though it's not much, most engineers don't want to have this included. So by default, this feature is disabled. But again, the amount that it's actually introducing is very, very little. To demonstrate this, I have three different instances of Avid's channel strip that have plus 30 dB of gain running into it, giving us a total of 90. Now, when I go ahead and turn the switch on, you can go ahead and hear that noise. Now, if you're only using one track, that may not be a problem. However, there have been instances when you deploy the same plugin with the setting on, as they build up collectively, that noise will get louder. So again, by default, this parameter is disabled. And that is it. We finally have reached the end of this tutorial. I hope by the end of this, you finally have a better understanding on how to use the Waves API 550A and its sister, the 550B. Now, before you leave, if you did enjoy this video, I would simply ask if you would consider subscribing, leaving a like, and also leaving some comments as well. I always read them. In addition, I have made some videos answering the questions such as, what's the best studio desk to buy with your money? Also, you might be asking yourself, what's a really cool amp sim to use for rock and metal music? Again, 
those types of videos you can find on this channel here. So go ahead and be sure to check those out. And with that being said, that's it. I hope you have a great day and well, happy mixing.